The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. Ben, are we gonna wrap up the virtual boy today? We are. Woo! So in a previous episode, we took apart the virtual boy, did a teardown to see what was inside of it and how it worked. In today's episode, we're gonna take those parts and rebuild it in a new way. We can rebuild it. We have the technology. Yes. So we're gonna try to make it a little smaller, a little lighter, um, have different focus controls. And the big thing I wanna do is make it so you can actually wear it on your head like a modern yeah. VR helmet. Yeah. You don't have to set it on a table and stick your head into it. Oh, the, you would also be cool? What? Is if you could like, like whoop, and like look around. Oh, nice. You know, if you could like fold up. Just like a welding helmet. So it has sound, right? Yeah, um, it had built-in speakers. I'm thinking we could have built-in headphones so that there's nice. like earbuds that hang here. I like that. And then you can just like, boop, put them in and then just wear it all in one and then you could, you could walk around with it and play it. It would be more portable than these other VR systems. I like it. Yeah, sounds pretty good. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Where are my dragons? Inspired designs. Oh, look, I knocked some hot glue loose. Regrettable acting. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Now we want to think about things we can do with this disassembled virtual boy. Because I don't really want to put it back together, I want to turn it into something new. I mean, the system was kind of dumb in that you had to like lean over in front of it with a stand and play it. What if it gets strapped to your head like all those other modern VR helmets? So yeah, let's see what we can do with this thing. I think we should start going from the eyes out. We have our two screens, for lack of a better term. I think we should have a fixed diopter, you know, Everyone will have the same diopter, ha ha ha. Yeah, maybe do a fixed diopter like this and have one frame and then we can get it actually a little bit closer to the eyes in that case. Just so long as the vibrating mirrors do not uh, occlude into the front surface. I guess what we could do is we could, well, I can't really fire it up because it's kind of disassembled. Yeah, because if I just put a piece of material here and it hits the mirror, it'll be like, it might break the mirror. That would be lame. What I could probably do is make a couple layers. I could do one layer of acrylic here just to give it about, I don't know, 0.1 inch distance in this direction. And then to that, I could attach another layer of acrylic which would go over both pieces and tie them together. So yeah, I think we could take this and take this, put a little bit of a riser here just to give us enough distance from the spinning mirrors and then connect them together with one solid piece. Yeah. Well, let's start by creating some plates right here. Here's a scan that I got. Now scans aren't always perfect, but they're usually close enough to give you a good reference when you actually draw the piece in. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just get the area that is pertinent to this. I'm gonna crop the image. Yeah, this aperture here doesn't appear to be quite square, so I better, I better draw it correctly. Got a little bit of a slant to it. Now I'm in AI, I'm going to place the image. Okay, let's measure it in reality, 2.6. Okay, so that's pretty close. We got 2.58 here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this image and just tweak it a little bit. Oftentimes scanners can have a little bit of distortion on one of the axes, so that's probably why it's not quite right. This is uh, 1.692, let's just double check. Eh, it's in a ballpark. I'm gonna draw vectors over this Photoshop image. Let's get a depth of this. Probably gonna be the same, it is. 0.62, yeah, how close it is. Yeah, see that one's quite close. The scanner will give you a pretty accurate number, but I still measure by hand just to make sure that everything checks out. So like here, I'm gonna take this and go up, take that, subtract that, bam. Then we can go in and add some nodes like here and here, then do this. Get a pretty, pretty good representation of it. Now there's a little bit of a slant here. This gap is a little wider than this. I don't think it's really gonna matter though. I'm gonna cut this on the laser and make sure it fits. So the idea is this first layer of acrylic gives us a space so the mirror can't possibly hit the part that goes near your eyes. So this is just a spacer layer. Okay, now this is the important layer. This is what actually goes in front of your eyes and keeps you from being able to touch the mirrors. 
and it lines up with this piece here. See how that works? And then I found a few spots where it was safe to drill into the Virtual Boy's plastic. I'm going to find some screws of an appropriate length. Rodents of unusual size. So I've got two layers of plastic here. The first layer prevents the mirrors from hitting your eyes or the glass or acrylic. The second layer is a solid layer that completely blocks you off from the mirrors. So between these two layers, we have a pretty good uh, amount of stiffening going on, which creates a solid unit. I mean, we'll probably want to add a cross support here. I guess I could probably do that next. And I also added some additional screw hole tabs here and here. So whatever else we build is easy to attach. So even though I'm designing this one piece at a time, I'm always adding extra screw mounts so I can, you know, always have some place to add the next thing. Um, I'm probably gonna check, hook this back up, see if it still looks good, and then I will continue on with the design. I'm thinking we can move this servo PC from back here to up here. If I remove the cams that work the focus, we can rebuild those later. We still have access to the focus tabs here. I also removed the left and right mirror control connectors. I don't think we need those. What else can we do to make this more compact? I'm thinking we could drop these capacitors down under underneath. Since there's really nothing under it, we could do this. Just take them, making sure we keep track of the polarity, of course, and put them down here. Ha ha ha, no one will know, except for everyone watching this episode. All right, here's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna attach some cables here to replace this thing, because I don't think it's gonna be long enough for what I wanna do. Then I'm going to attach the servo cables directly to the circuit board. Some people might think I'm crazy for doing that, but I think it's genius. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I've recombined everything from the Virtual Boy into one more compact unit. So we have the servo driver board on the top. It used to be on the back. We still have our focus rings here. We'll add sliders for those when we build the main attachment. We have our 3D printed clamps on the end to hold the ribbon cables in place here and here. Then on the bottom, we have the main PCB. That's where it was before, but we've moved it back a little bit. We also added our custom acrylic base for it. And I flipped these connectors around. So see how they're now connected through the bottom? That just takes up less space. So what we're gonna do next is figure out the best way to make this into some sort of head-mounted unit. Maybe I'll have Karen help with that since she's into like costumes and belts and stuff. But basically, it'll be kind of like this, and we'll make it that it stays on your head, unlike the original, so you can wear this around at parties. It's very fashionable. I think I might keep the controller and the battery pack the same. So I think if this thing's attached to your head and there's a cable coming off of it that goes to your hand, that's not really a big deal. And that's actually probably no less convenient than any of these VR helmets they're making. So yeah, next step is how to attach this to a head. Karen and I got to work designing the head mount for the virtual man. One of the features we wanted to add was the ability to flip the unit up and out of the way when not in use. We realized that a face shield would make a great starting point. We bought one and then removed the plastic front and got to work figuring out the correct angle for viewing the two screens. After taking some measurements and cutting a few paper patterns, I arrived at a solution. So I'm thinking when it's in the folded down mode, the Virtual Boy will be about like that. But I think this part, I might just build into the visor, so we might not actually keep this. That I don't know, <laughs> I'm still working on it. But if this ends up right about here, then it can flip up. The thing I have to realize is, you know, you know, we have to come down from the pivot point and over. So, yeah. So it wouldn't look like that. It would be more like this. And then the head band would be kind of like that. And then your head would be there and the strap and the rear strap. See, we, I mean, we could make it level with the top of the headband, but that would just cause the enclosure to be overly large. So yeah, I think we should swoop down and then come over and then this would be the, you know, the thickness of the virtual boy, you know, whatever it needs. Uh, yeah, we should still be able to make this stop. So it basically won't go any lower than this, but then you'll also be able to tilt it up, in which case it'll look like that. And then you can like talk to your friends and stuff, assuming you have any friends left after you build this thing. I laser cut some side pieces for the Virtual Man out of PET-G, which is a stronger type of plastic than acrylic that is still able to be cut with the laser. These pieces will mount to both the sides of the unit and to the 3D printed parts shown here. 
After my spacing mounts had finished printing, I screwed everything together and made sure it was all still functional. Now it's time to make it look cool! I laser cut some plywood pieces for the top and bottom of the unit to make it as sturdy as possible and also to give me places to mount controls and ports. Finally, I cut a skin out of red engraving plastic that will go over the front, top, and bottom of the unit to give it a more polished look. Once the decorative skin was cut, we formed it to the curve of the unit using the heat gun. Once we were done doing this, we ran into a problem. Okay, so we need to solve the nose smashing problem. Yeah, so what happens is this weighs a lot more than the face shield did. Mm -hmm. So this plastic here it flexes bends and it allows right it. There. Some of that is from the screw, but not much, or the lack of the screws, I should say. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing have a strap come down here and support it here. Mm -hmm. All right. Because we could, I mean, the alternative is move this peg mm -hmm. down so that we're attaching to this uh, lower on the arc. Yeah. Which would bring this up so that when it rests down, but I'm oh, still we, convinced we that we another, want. Add another screw, you're saying? Or something like that. But yeah. I still think that we need a better physical stop um, that's more directly controlling right, the weight of that. This is still going to flex exactly. whether or not we yeah. need that. So, well, yesterday we tested and I took some of that webbing and looped it through here and attached it to the front and mm -hmm. it held it really nicely. Yep. So, I don't think if we just cut a strip in this top skin that it's going to be structurally sound enough. No. I think the the top layer is going to be too thin and it'll either just bend or break right. and like pull it and stretch. Do you have the strap material here that you want right to use? The, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's see how wide it is. Inch, inch and, and a half. half. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's an inch and a half. Would you stitch it here and then have Velcro here? No, I would, well so first, I think we should 3D print a piece on top that has like a bar going across that I can loop this around. Um, oh, so the piece that it comes up off the surface. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then also we can, that way we can mount it more centrally on this. So mm -hmm. it grabs farther down and gets more of the weight. Um, I wouldn't put it all the way to the front. I put it about halfway at the halfway mark. I'm just drawing on What this. are you drawing? I'm drawing the thing that you want. Oh, I see. At first it looked like an elf. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, um, what I would probably do... Like that? Yeah! And then the exactly. strap. Exactly. Tell you what, I'll make the 3D print if you do the sewing and strapping and Velcroing. Okay, I'll, stra I'll uh, track down some Velcro. <laughs> and I'll measure this rod and draw some stuff. I recut the top of the unit to include the 3D printed strap support idea that Karen came up with. I also added some focus knobs and designed the top skin so the knobs would have physical limits which prevent them from hitting the lenses. I also made the holes big enough so they wouldn't have to remove the knobs in order to remove the top of the unit. Always build things you can take apart. The final step was buttoning everything up. Karen sewed a support strap for the Virtual Boy while I glued and screwed everything together. It was then time for a test run. All right, Karen, we're outside and I'm still playing the Virtual Boy. Okay. I can actually, I can still see the screen. Uh, there is light leakage. Uh, a lot of it's coming from behind. Like the rotating mirrors that create the image are actually allowing me to see behind me, which is kind of cool. Like I'm in a black hole. Like I can see, I can see these letters here. Can you read Virtual Man backwards? What? Well, yeah, it's just, it says, Manlefavis. Hey, you know these, um, these, the black things that were twisting in the, uh, you know, the adjustment things. Uh -huh. What if we almost draped some felt behind that? Like right, basically right where your ear is. Like here, can you see my fingers here and here? Yeah. What, what about that? What do you think? That could work. Because I think if we sealed this and dropped some blinders down there, that would make a big difference. Do you want to try adding that and try it again outside? Sure. I'm going to try to play tennis for a second. Okay, we're back outside. We've added a lot of felt to this unit. There's some on the inside of the main eyepiece. And, and by then we felt also have, means funky foam. Yep, and we have some peaky blinders here on the side. I mean, it's a really bright, sunny day out with any clouds. So if we can see it here, we can see it anywhere. It's a me, Mario. What do you think? Uh, yeah, it's a lot better. Glare? I can still see a reflection in those little bits of slits. Oh. You know, like the, yeah, so I can see behind me with the mirrors but none of it actually goes on the screen. Well, I mean, our goal was to make a virtual boy that worked better. We solved the problems of it not being visible outdoors by blocking out more of it and making it nice and dark inside. And you can still see behind you a little bit through the mirrors, but that doesn't actually go onto the image area, which means you can use it to see if people are sneaking up on you.
That's all the time we have for today. What would you have done differently with the Virtual Man builds? And what other classic technology would you like to see us improve on the show? Let us know on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash tbhs. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll virtually see you next time. Now you're playing with power. Hi, I'm a really cool person. Do I look super cool? No. I have to make this thing as cool as possible, even though it's still a virtual boy. I do not ever listen to anyone that says that like, I'm not contagious anymore. You don't know. And Latin Hebrew starts with an I. Oh wait, that's really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.